What is up everyone? Welcome for the first time or back to another DLJ Works video. Today's topic, should I go ahead and pursue a solo business or should I find remote work as a web designer developer in today's climate? I say why not do both? Let's talk about it after the intro. Now, if you've been on YouTube, you've been watching a bunch of videos as of lately, probably since March, since this whole thing's happened, you've heard terms like we live in unprecedented times. These are just, this is just weird. We, we got a new normal. You, you've heard all these new things going on right now, right? So as a web designer, as a developer, we probably live in a big opportunistic time for you career-wise. And why do I actually say that? Because you're you're in the house more than likely you are in the house depending on where you're living at I, I live in texas right now we still have certain liberties at this moment and at the time of this recording we've had a number of cases just actually spike up so you know they they're caught putting a lot of restrictions back on us but whatever the case may be you're you're in the house right now at this time so you have to ask yourself the question if you're interested in going into this field where do i get started at and how do I actually, I don't know anything about web design or development. If you're that person, you're saying that to yourself, what is the starting point for me? And you, you, and the big thing is you're like, I got to make money fast. I don't really have time to spend three months to six months learning about a new skill right now. I have to put some money on the table. I have to do something career based. And when I say, why not pursue both at this moment? That's actually what I mean. And it's going to take a lot of hard work. You have to be willing to do that hard work. But that's a question that you're going to have to answer. Now, when I say start a solo business and in the time that you're actually learning, let me back up some in the time that you are. That you're trying to learn skills, you need to start having projects. That would be the first thing that I would actually suggest that you start doing. If I can go back in time and redo some of the things that I've actually in a way that I actually started my web design journey here I would have actually picked up more projects and I would have let those projects dictate to me the skills that I actually needed to learn because here's what's going to happen getting a project is going to condense your time frame for getting a career learning skills earning money into a it's going to take it from six months and almost bring it down to a month because here's what's going to be the benefit you're going to have a portfolio work at it under your belt you're going to gain a new skill. You're going to have something to show people when you tell them that this is what you're doing. And you can also start applying to jobs. So getting a project is the, going to be the ultimate goal because also all of the arbitrary knowledge that you're learning, you'll be able, now you're showing how you can actually apply that. So let's say, for example, you want to get on the development side of web design and development. All right. And I, I know I say them interchangeably because they're like sisters almost, brothers, how you want to look at it. So you decide to go on the web development part. You want to, my biggest advice is to always go with HTML, CSS. It's scripting language, not necessarily programming, but at least it introduces you to syntax, lexical structure, how actual tags and the coding works. It, it introduces it to you on a basic level. And you can really get deep with HTML and CSS without ever having to even touch a single thing of JavaScript. And a lot of people don't talk about that because now HTML5 and CSS3 has gotten so deep that you never really have to leave those two things. And if you learn it on a deeper level, you can actually, those skills can transfer to when you start going to other platforms and building things on um, for your client. If you're, if you're getting customers on Weebly, WordPress, any other platform, Squarespace, all that, it gives you a better understanding on how to even use those platforms. So if you start with those two things, and you, for example, like now you learn P tags, you learn paragraph tags, you learn how to design those tags with some CSS. So you maybe you want to design a landing page and maybe you want to create a landing page actually that can be functional to somebody who actually needs to sell a product. And this is how to, you, know, you use your landing page in order to do that. So maybe you can actually create a project, actually get with somebody who actually needs a landing page and have them put their content, their sales content onto the landing page that you created. And based on how you, what you've learned, what you're learning from creating the web psychology, the design psychology and applying that on the landing page has actually resulted in getting more clients, then that's going to look great on you. And it, it, a lot of people also don't talk about too that your website, when you create, have websites and you're starting to build that, 
we have to go from just having a portfolio of just looking good to now what do these what kind of result do these websites build are they i mean what kind of results are these websites getting after i build them are they bringing in more customers is my is my traffic going up is it designed to cause conversion rates and even if it's just an informational website are how many readers am i getting are people pleased with the design is this easy to use those are the types of questions that you want to answer. You want to have your websites answered because it's not about just having a portfolio anymore. You have to go one level up. And I don't know if I, I, I'm going to do a video here in the future. I actually have it in the can right now on why you should use YouTube. Why YouTube is actually the ultimate portfolio container for a web designer or developer. Because with YouTube, not only do you put yourself in a position to actually show your work to demonstrate and document your process, but now you're in a position where you can get traffic and people can actually see what you're doing. And not only are you attracting potential companies who may be actually watching your videos, but you're you're just attracting people who are seeing what you're doing and they figure that now they could actually use the services that you're providing. They could use somebody's skill set that you have. And right now the time is just ripe. So should you get I don't even know if I answered the question all the way in the beginning, but the question was, should you get um, start a solo business or get remote work? Well, now that I've talked about in depth on projects and portfolios, let's return back to that. And getting a solo business, when I say why not do both? Well, when you start creating projects, you're starting to get your skill set up. The way that you can apply those skills now when you're starting a solo business, you can start building templates. Start using those design skills that you got and actually learn how to apply it to WordPress themes and maybe you can actually start building a template or figuring out how to build HTML and CSS templates for Weebly, Wix, Squarespace, things that people can actually use. These are applicable ways that you can actually use these skills to make and gain sales, which therefore you can start a business on the side. Because I know right now some people need, you need immediate money. So you want to kind of figure out how can I actually package this stuff up and sell it to the open market for people that are looking for a nice template. So get good maybe at designing some well-placed templates and, and actually maybe on YouTube, if you had started a YouTube channel, document how that your template, how you can actually take your HTML, CSS code and apply it to those platforms. So that, that's just one idea that I'm giving out right now. Um, and in terms of going for a remote job, and the reason I say remote right now because of the situation that we're in, you, you can also, in documenting your process and having, a, in addition to having a portfolio website, you can also just keep applying for remote jobs. And here's the thing, when you're starting a business at the same time, or at least selling products, maybe you're not starting a full-fledged business, maybe you just get a Gumroad account and you're just selling products, all right? If you're doing both of these things congruently at the same time, even when people are slow to hire right now, you're having something to fall back on in terms of like, man, I'm putting applications out. I got my stuff on Indeed. I'm sending people projects. I'm, I'm being proactive, but at least I got, I'm making some sales right now because if nothing else, at least I can show companies that I'm, I know how to actually make sales. I could develop a product. I can make sales. Now, now, not only do I have a web design development skill set, but I also have this sales and marketing skill set to complement that. So not only am I a web designer and developer, but I'm a bona fide marketer and salesperson. So you, do you see how that works? So if you do those things together, um, you have one to fall back on and it's giving you confidence. It's making you feel good to actually go out there, not feel insecure, but to go out there and, and say like, you know, man, if I don't even, if this company never calls me back, it's all good. I'm, I'm, I'm making strides on my own. I'm learning how to actually put my best foot forward. I'm making these sales and things are going to go good right now. So that, that's why I say you want to just go ahead and do both because they work in concert. So that, that's just something I learned from my experience. And it's a way that I've actually been able to keep the anxiety down when I when I was actually trying to go out there and shop my resume, shop my portfolio online and try to get a position as a web designer and developer. I, I had the fortitude to, I had the mental toughness and the testicular fortitude to not feel down or insecure because I was also making sure that I was learning sales and marketing by creating products and, and trying to figure out how to actually sell certain things. And actually, the position that I'm in now is contributed to 
well, I can't, I'm not going to take all the credit. A lot of it was God just opening doors. I, I, don't, I don't even mind being honest about that. But it was a lot of that, like me in the position that I'm in right now was taking my boss being able to see that I was doing, I was, I had extra ambition. I had this additional ambition in addition to my teaching gig that I had before I got into this. And I had something to offer in terms of generating numbers for the company. So take this advice however you want to. Uh, I really hope you got something out of it, but I'm really desiring to help those who are just at the house and you really don't know what to do. So at the end of the day, start a project though first, get some skills Let that project dictate what type of skills you need. And when I was a teacher, we called it project-based learning. Whatever skills you gain from that, you not only show that you can apply the skills, but you develop the portfolio and you also have something, to you have some work to show in the shop around for those who are actually looking for work right now at this point in time. That's going to be it for this video. Like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will talk to you in the next video. God bless y'all.